so it's been eight months since I made my last tier list. And y'all really like, like, tier lists, mashup charts, just kind of me talking about characters. Because, you know, they're like some of my most popular videos on my channel. Or, yes, my Smash videos on my channel. Like, my Joker mashup chart is, like, doing really well. I don't know why. It's, like, a, a thousand views, which is really good for me. That's ten times my subscriber count. That's crazy. So, I thought I'd go ahead and make a new tier list. I haven't made one in a while. And what you're seeing now, this is what my old tier list looked like. And it's been eight months, so obviously, you know, the meta has developed. My opinion has changed. And I'm just a better player, and I understand the game better. Just not by a, too, too much. I'm not that good. But I, I have a new knowledge of the game. Let's put it like that. And I thought, with today, obviously... Uh, I, I'd just be kind of showing you how I would change my tier list, rather than just making a whole new one, because I kind of thought that was pointless. Because, yes, my opinion has changed, but it hasn't changed on every single character. I still agree with myself on some placements, but I, anyway, purpose of this video, I'm changing my old tier list to match my more current thoughts. And once the rest of the DLC characters release, I'll come back and make another tier list. Because obviously, you know, we might have some more patches there. Some characters might get changed. My opinion still might change. So we'll have a new list. But I'll stop rambling and uh, we'll jump into the video. So first off, okay, okay, just actually before we start. I want to point out something. There's no longer a top 10. I, I just put top tier. Because I remember I, I tried making another tier list. And it just wasn't working because I was like, oh, no, this character's top tier. But no, this one is too, ah, it's so hard. So I just kind of said, fuck that. And I just put a top tier. So yeah, anyway, that's okay. That's enough rambling. We're actually going to get into the video. First off, um, I want to start off with, I think, what is a hot take. I think Korin's a high, uh, high tier character. I think Korin's a very good character. Now, does she have flaws? Yes, yeah, she is slow. And I think her projectile is kind of slow, meaning she has to kind of fight a lot more. But other than that, she's good in so many other areas. She has good combos. She has good frame data. She has big hitboxes. She has a pretty good recovery. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to challenge her up B, but that shit has mad priority. Also, it can kill off the top. As well as she does have kill confirm. She has she she just has a whole bag of shit, right? And but obviously, you know, she is held back by the fact that she's slow slower, I should say, and she has a slowish projectile. I feel like, other than those two, she would be very, very good. But yeah, uh, I think Korn's a good character. I don't know how hot of a take that is, but uh, I just thought I'd start off with that one. And don't worry, we'll fix this terrible top tier. Er, it's not that bad, but I'll fix it. I'll make it more better. Let's put it like that. Min Min, oh buddy, I was listening to my take on Min Min, and I, I think I nailed it right in the head. I called her a gimmicky mid-tier until Japan proved it, and guess what? Japan fucking proved it. This character is really good. Debatably, yeah, no, top tier. I think this character is so, so good. This character has so much shit. Now then again, does she have flaws? Yeah, she is slow, and her recovery is not the greatest. But here's the thing, she has so much other shit bullshit going for her she covers so much everything with her two arms because okay you want to run in on her she can just up the arm arm and then there you go your approach is done <laughs> there's so few characters that can just like get in on her at least i feel i could be playing this matchup completely wrong but holy fuck i feel like good min min just invalidate me playing against min min on elite smash it sucks because, God, this character is good. And all you gotta do is press A, up B, A, B. And, like, it is so hard to get on this character. I see a lot of people just saying, get in on this character, edge guard this character. God, no, you, get in, try getting in. She has such good shit. You can't zone her. Because not only will she zone you back and probably combo you off that. But, she also has a reflector for some reason. For some reason, they gave her fucking blast kick, but it reflects. AKA her up smash. Uh, her up, if you don't know, her up smash is a reflector for some. Who knows? You can't camp this bitch then. She also has, you know, like, out of shield or kind of get off me tools. Like, let's say you're pressuring her in shield. She can just kind of nair you away with her fast ram ram there. She also has three different nairs, by the way. One for killing, one, and I think the other two are just for combos. Because ram rams is really fast, and then the dragon one's just like her neutral air. Literally just her neutral air. But, yeah, I that's my genuine opinion on Min Min. I think this character is busted. 
don't get me wrong she has like flaws but it's so hard to exploit those flaws because how much she does okay that that's enough rambling about min min i hate min min that is kind of fun to invalidate your friends with her but dude, i hate min min uh mega man yeah you're high tier dude you have so much shit going for you i don't know why i put mega man in high mid tier she he's a good character he has so much just stuff he can do man He's not slow, so he can already, he's already better than, like, most characters. He has so many projectiles, he has so much combos, he just, god, you just go watch, like, Mega Man combo videos. I know they're not, like, optimal or anything, but look how much just freedom this character has, it's crazy. Okay, I want to talk about probably my worst take on this whole list from back then. I put Samus in mid-tier? Really? Nah, Samus, Samus is good. Because here's the thing, she has a broken move called Charge Shot. And Charge Shot, in my opinion, is disgustingly broken. Because the second you press Neutral B and you start charging, you're applying pressure to your opponent. Because what that is, is a charge smash attack that you can use whenever the fuck you feel like. If you're ever slightly pressured, or let's say your opponent slips up, bop, dead. Neutral B broken you can also use the edge guard like holy fuck samus is a very well designed zoner because she's actually designed like a zoner unlike some other zoners i'll be talking about later yeah i'm looking straight at you you know you we all know who the fuck i'm talking about right here but anyway anyway samus is a very like i guess committal character because like you hit someone you don't just run at people with samus right with like other zoner like some other fucking zoners in this game you just kind of run at them right but samus doesn't do that she's a lot more of a campy bastard her moves are a lot more i guess once you do them you're kind of committed into them outside of like i don't know i think nair maybe down there but like other than that her moves are kind of like if you miss them you're gonna get fucked kind of deal She's also pretty heavy, she's gonna be living for a while. She has a lot of mix-ups on her landing and recovery with down B. Like, this character's good. I don't know that that much about her, but like, from my general understanding, this character's pretty good. Uh, another character, but very, very debated lately, is Hiro. I kind of believed in Hiro before the Japanese, the Japanese man came in here and was like, No, listen, listen, this character's busted, okay? But like, before... I, I kind of believe in this character. This character has so much random bullshit. And here's the thing. You're just kind of getting pressured whenever he downbees, right? I don't know how true that statement actually is. But I feel like every time he presses that downbee, I have to be on top of him. If not, he's going to get a buff and kill me at like 20. It's stupid. As well as, there's some broken shit in that menu. Magic burst, kaboom, bounce, busted. Literally, bounce and validate some projectile characters' whole game plans. Like, I tried playing, I think it was Hero versus. I'm trying to think who I was playing. It was fucking. I, I think I was playing as Link. I think. Hold on. Yeah, it was Link. And, like, dude, like, my whole game plan just kind of fell apart. Because my, my game plan with Link is just. Camp Bomb. Yeah, no. Did not work against him. I had the spam Nair. Sucked. But anyway, anyway, uh, that was a horrible analogy, and the time to bring that up. But yeah, I think Hero just has too much bullshit, if that makes sense. Also, his recovery is, like, crazy. If you can go through those menus fast, you are guaranteed, like, a zoom off stage. I swear to God. That meaning it is so hard to, to edge guard this bastard. Then it becomes a juggling... Your edge guard situation becomes a juggling situation whenever you use zoom how dude that's so crazy but i feel like this character is definitely going places if that makes sense diddy Kong, i feel like diddy Kong was pretty well established as a high tier with tweak using him yeah no people are gonna start calling his character top tier by them like once offline terms come back i wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing esam put this bastard in top tier even though he probably might be uh, he has a lot of options. He can just do a lot of things. Banana gives him so much utility. He has monkey flip kick thingy mathinger. Holding shield. You know, he can just kind of do that. Play, it's a pretty good move. But anyway, I feel like the main thing we want to talk about with Diddy Kong is the banana. It gives him so much of everything. It leads into true kills. It edge guards. You could use it for these crazy ridiculous setups. I don't think he has a zero death anymore. But he did. And I feel like that's worth noting. <laughs> 
This character's fucking crazy. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but everything is not ordered. Outside of, like, top five, maybe. But, yeah. I, I feel like this is a good time to mention it. So, okay, we've been pulling everyone up. What, what about we pull someone down? Marth. I I said I believed in Marth. Yeah, I do not believe in Marth anymore. I think this character is bad. He's just, I feel like he would be good if he was just consistent. But I feel like Ultimate just does not reward this character in the slightest. Ultimate's a very much more or less a mash your buttons type of game. And Marth does not want to do that. He wants to, you know, kind of play a much more slower pace game and kind of space moves yeah no 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 look at look at top tier look how mashy those bastards are look out look at top and i tier look how mashy those bastards are no 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 buddy no 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 most of the counters the sorties are kind of more rushed down characters like you know joker i think her ninja does pretty well against sorties so does sheik and marth doesn't want that right he wants he, as i said before he wants to play a more slow paced game he wants to kind of keep you out and hit his tippers which will lead in the kills kill you it's like they're good but the problem is it just doesn't work and that's why i think roy is a top tier character because he doesn't really suffer from some things a lot of um uh sorties do i think he plays more like a dagger character kind of like joker because you run in on Roy, he's going to kill you, right? <laughs> like, that's just a true statement. If a character like, you know, Greninja or Sheik runs on top of Roy, he wants that. Because his sweet spots are inside the sword. Marth's are on the outside of the sword, meaning you want to rush down Marth. Because what is he going to do? Hit you with his pathetically weak normal sword? Yeah, no, Marth, Marth is not a good character in this game. Sadly, I wish he was good, but he's just not. Lucario, okay, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I hate Lucario, but there's no way a character with that sort of gimmick is low tier. There's just no way in my mind. I don't know if general opinion on Lucario has changed or anything, but my opinion has. This character's gimmick alone pushes him to mid tier. Yeah, his normals aren't very good. Like, everything this character has it just isn't too, too good. But, like, Aura alone pushes him to a mid-tier. If Aura was on a better character, he, it, I think Aura would be a busted mechanic. But, no, sadly, it's stuck on fucking Lucario. So, it's never really going to be used that much. I mean, Lucario does have some things going for him, though, like Aura Sphere, I guess. I mean, his recovery is pretty okay once you have Aura. But, yeah, other than Aura, dude, I don't think Lucario is good. If Lucario didn't have Aura, bro, he'd be so fucking trash. <laughs> So, I put Mewtwo in mid-tier. I don't know why. Like, don't get me wrong. He's not, like, an amazing character or anything. But there's no way a character that is that fast and has a charge shot-like move is that fucking low on the tier list. There's no way you're a mid-tier if you have that sort of speed and that sort of projectile, you know? As well as Mewtwo has other things going for him too. I know he has like true footstool down B combos. If you don't know what his down B is, it's a little move where you like stun you and then you just kill you for it. Like it's pretty good. But then again, this character has a lot of lacking areas. Like I know for a fact his weight is the thing everyone talks about. His weight and his tail. Those are the things every fucking Mewtwo player. Just like any time you just even say the word Mewtwo, those are the instantly things they start typing on Twitter. Like, literally, it's crazy. Then again, do I think he should have the tail hitbox? Yes. Uh, it's literally a part of his fucking character. What do you, what do you want? <laughs> like, well, why wouldn't he have that? Maybe you not make it as big? But, like, no, that tail should be a hitbox. I'm sorry. As well as him being light. I don't know why he's so light. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I could not tell you why he's that light, but he is. Uh, his double jumps are pretty trash as well. Like, don't get me wrong, it gives him a lot of height, but it's slow. Meaning, if you try and jump out of, like, disadvantage, or, like, your enemy comes at the edge guard you, and you just want to jump away, you kind of can't, because you kind of just get hit before that. But, like, every other character, they can just kind of jump out of that situation. Unless you have, like, a bad jump height, like Little Mac. But, other than that, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking out my ass here now. So, okay, let's start doing, like, the big boy things, right? 
moving from high tier to top tier. Cause I think there's some characters that go from high tier to top tier. Game & Watch, I don't know why I haven't put you in top tier. My reasoning for not putting him in top tier is that he's light. Yeah, so is ESS. <laughs> Game & Watch is insanely broken. He has the best out of shield option and potentially the best move in the game being up B. That move is insanely busted. It combos. It kills. It's an insane fucking edge guard and recovery tool like game watch is insane he has so much going for him as well as having bucket being a reflector and a kill move because if you have if you absorb energy based things it just becomes a kill move for no reason it is stupid if you try landing against him he's gonna spam up air which yeah it's not as potent as it was in four but like the move's still amazing you cannot sit there and tell me a move that fucking disjointed that keeps you in the air is not broken and let's not even talk about the random fucking rng factors he has with side b he has down smash which is another broken tool i know game watch is like using it whenever you're landing on him or whenever like you're trying to land like if you fast fall nair i know a lot of game watches want to down smash you which will kill you by the way if you get down smashed by game and watch say your fucking prayers you're getting fucking ass smashed or well probably something more elaborate and more useful his back air is amazing everything this character does is just good his literally only flaw is that he's light that's his only flaw other than that he's just broken everywhere else utterly insane character Pokemon, tra yeah, Pokemon Trainer is broken. I don't know why. I had her in top tier, and then my next tier list, I decided, yeah, okay, no, she's not top tier. No, the character's top tier. Once you start learning about this game, uh, Pokemon Trainer, you're going to think is top tier, because this character's, uh, I've seen a lot of people just say, this is everything you hate rolled into one character. Squirtle, a tiny, small, fast-ass bastard that combos you for fucking days and is, is extremely hard to hit. Ivysaur, big hitboxes. Disjoints, camps you, insane fucking moves being an up air down air, true kill confirms with up B. A, a stupid, stupid character. And then Charizard is the up B or out of shield machine. Every, you, if that bastard's in shield, but you gotta be so fucking careful. I think his up smash is like frame six in kills. Back air, he can literally cheese grab you at zero and just kill you off of two back airs. His back air is an insane move. If you hit the sweet spot on it, it kills insanely early. Has great range. He has a good recovery. God, Pokemon Trainer is a disgusting character. And everything I just said about all three of those characters, it's all in one character. There's no way this character is not top tier. There's zero fucking chance, you know? Ooh, it's time for me to talk about my favorite bastard in Smash. Oh, I hate Pac-Man, and yeah, he's top tier. This is not how you design a zoner. Uh, Samus, I think, is a well-designed zoner because very committal. Pac-Man is the exact fucking opposite. I don't think this character has a committal move in his moveset. And I don't even play Pac-Man. Yeah, I know how broken this character is. Have you... Look at, look at Pac-Man's frame data. If you showed that frame data to, like, an actual, just, like, fighter, no one's gonna tell you that's a zoner. Yet, he is. There are some Pac-Man that don't even fucking zone. They just run at you full air and air. And it works. You have to respect that shit on shield. It's so safe. It's so fast. It's so good. And then, you know, everything I just said. You know, this character can box. This character can scrap. He, he knows how. He can play the fucking neutral. And then he zones your ass. His neutral B has so much fucking usage. You could spend forever learning that. Like, it has so much uses. Galaga is insane combos, key kills, Bell sets up the, for kills, Orange can use the, like, snipe shit, the yellow one, the grenade watermelon thingy -ma thinger has setups. Everything this character does is a setup or fast. It makes no sense. Have you looked at his fucking S-Mash? It is so strong, so fast. God, Pac-Man is so disgustingly designed. That's not even mentioning Fire Hydrant, which forces you to jump. Meaning Pac-Man can use his amazing fucking aerials to swat you out of the air. God, Pac-Man is so disgusting. Oh, wait, have I even mentioned his recovery yet? Oh my god, Pac-Man. Who designed this bastard? Literally who? 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 I actually want to talk to the man that designed this character. Because in Smash 4, sure, like, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, sure, it's Pac-Man, woohoo. And Smash Ultimate, this is, like, the fucking devil. 
And even then, I don't even hate him as much as some other characters. I'm staring straight at him. I won't mention his name, but y'all know who the fuck I hate. And then Snake is like, is like also broken zoner, because he just does so much. Snake grenades give him so much options, and like he can just break out of shit with grenade. I think grenades frame one or two. Very broken. Uh, his recovery is pretty good, but then again, it does force you into the air because you can't go low with that shit. Someone's gonna hit you. It's pretty slow. It has no hitbox. Um, C4 is amazing for camping. Like, everything this character does very good at camping. He has insanely huge hitboxes that are very lingering and kill. Like, Snake's such a good character. I don't know why I thought he wasn't. And let's not even talk about Nikita edgeguards. Nikita is single-handedly one of the best edgeguarding tools in this entire game. Because, uh, yeah, sure, bad snakes won't hit it. But good snakes are going to read your every fucking option and snipe you the second you try and do anything. Crazy character. And Sonic, I think, is almost top tier. I don't really have too good of an opinion on Sonic. Because so whenever I see a Sonic on Quick Play or Elite Smash or whatever, I yeah, I just disconnect. I don't I don't have the willpower to fight a Sonic online, honestly. If it, if I ever go to a tournament and I see a Sonic, I'm I'm DQing. I don't care. I like listen. I don't want to win that fucking badly, you know. <laughs> like you want to go sit on the other side of the stage for all seven minutes. I, I don't really care. So I don't really have too great of an opinion on him because i'm bad at the game so he's probably a top tier but i can't really justify it but like look at sonic matchup charts i'll probably be a nice justification because god this character beats so much shit cap the falcon is also i think debatably a top tier because Fal one of falcon's biggest weaknesses <laughs> i can't speak one of falcon's biggest weaknesses is the fact that you could just go off and you know it's hard to edgeguard Falcon because his up grabs you, but you could just get grabbed by it, tech it, tech out, and just hit him, and he's dead. But, like, now, with, you know, they remove that. So, you know, you go off to do that, you get hit by his up you tech it, he just jumps or does anything away. Most likely, he's gonna reversal you for that shit. Captain Falcon's insane now. Honest to fucking god, he's probably a top tier character. It's just, I don't have that, that much faith in him. Once Fatality and Nick C start winning tournaments, then I'll put him in top tier. But once again, right now, it's just like, I don't want to. <laughs> so I'm looking at the rest of the list, and I kind of agree with everything else I've said. Uh, I know Cloud being in high tier is kind of a hot take. A lot of people put him in mid tier, but there's no way this character is mid tier. There's just zero fucking chance. This character has so much shit. And I understand a lot of people's uh, vision of the game is a lot skewed by Wi-Fi. But, dude, this character's crazy good. Okay, maybe not crazy good, but he's good. He's good. He has stuff. He has things. He does it. He has limit. He has back air. He has up B out of shield. He's a good character. And Inkling not being a top... I don't know why people are putting Inkling a top tier. She's not a top tier. Yes, she is insane. She is a very, very uncommittal character. But, like, once you're out of a certain percentage window against Inkling, it is extremely hard for her to kill. Like... I don't think you guys understand that. Because, <laughs> like, a character like Sheik, she has, like, kill confirms all over the place. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, Sheik is very getting to the point where she's going to be very optimized, and she's going to fucking destroy offline. Inkling, however, is more of a just not, because Inkling mains literally no, like, one kill confirm. That's up, uh, up throw up B, or up throw up air. And even then, it's like certain percentage windows, and once you're out of those windows, it's a, it's a bit harder. It's a bit harder for her to kill. I think that's my justification for her being high tier. Then again, in the comments, you know, tell me why I'm wrong. And then now, I have this list, I don't know, and I still don't know about a lot of these characters. Duck Hunt, Ices, I, 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 I just, I don't know. Lucas, however, though, I know for a fact it's just meh, mid-tier. This character sure has things, but not a lot of things at that. Actually, yeah, no, he has things. His four tilt's really good. His up B is kind of annoying to deal with. Even then, though, it kind of gets exploited, but he can kind of deal lesser with that than Ness because he has the rope snake thingamathinger that just tethers the ledge. So, I mean, yeah, it's a lot less worse for him. His speed spots are pretty good. But even then, he just doesn't have that, you know, annoyance factor that uh, Ness has. As well as his downbeat is a lot worse than Ness's. 
because Nessus are like right on top of him, meaning if you're behind him, he can still fucking uh what is it called? BK magnet you with the back air. But ne Lucas is like right in front of him, so he can only do things like in front of him. There's probably ways around that that I don't know, but that that's my general opinion on her. And then Robin is probably the only other one in there I can rank. And I think she's just mid-tier. She has stuff. She can do probably things and that and this, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think very highly of Robin, in my opinion. Because the character's so fucking slow. If the, the character might actually be really good if it wasn't for the fact that she's one of the slowest characters in the entire game. <laughs> Because, like, yeah, this character can do things. I've seen this character do some weird stuff. Like, you know, PK fire, or what is it called? Arc fire into up air, to arc fire into up air, or whatever. But here's the thing. A lot of the time, she's just too slow to punish a lot of things. <laughs> as well as the tombs are very weird. Because she's the only Fire Emblem character to have them. Where, I mean, I understand she's a lot more unique than the other Fire Emblem characters. But it's just weird to me that she's the only character that has that. Which really limits the characters in a lot of ways. I Meaning, yeah, sometimes your aerials are just going to do fucking nothing instead of, you know, smash attacks. And she kind of needs it because she's slow. So, yeah, that, that, that's my opinion on that. And now is time for me to um, order t uh, high tier a little bit. Or top tier a little bit more. Every other tier is just not ranked. And this tier is not going to be that, that ranked outside, like, maybe top 10, 15. Something like that. Uh, first off, I don't think Pal is up 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 here anymore. I think Shulk is definitely up here. Wario is not. Probably like here. Maybe yeah. Yeah, that's a good place for Wario. ZSS is up here. Like holy shit. I I Mars corrupted my head, but no, this character is still legitimately broken. This character has so much shit she can do. She basically has a almost non existing disadvantage state. Like, stage control really doesn't matter for this character. It's crazy. So while she plays this crazy keep away game, it, like, whoa, my bad. This character's so good. Holy shit. Pal got nerfed, and I think that's why CSS is better. Because Palutena can no longer grab you for free. Because that's something Pala could really do that she got away with a lot. Because, like, if you, like, hit her shield, and you didn't jump away or, like do something to not get grabbed, she was going to grab you, because that's how good her grab range is. Now, it's a lot harder to grab with her, and I see a lot of pal mates be like, bro, this character's good, dude. This character's trash. No, your character's still a disgusting, broken top tier, but not that broken. Okay, no, no, no. You, just, uh, you lost one of your most broken tools, but still, you have all these other amazing broken tools, you know? You can just grab a lot less. You, you're you're, le you're a lot less fishing for grabs, you know? And even then, they, like, nerfed your grab combo, so, like, you, you don't have to fish for grab that that much. And Palo really didn't fish for grab all of that much, now that I'm thinking about it. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think it changed that much. Min, Min, I think Min Min's better than Roy. Roy is a great character, probably the best swordy in the game. Outside of Shulk, obviously, but... Best Fire Emblem character in the game, let's put it like that. But Min Min, Min, Min just has so much shit. I, uh, I hate Min Min. But, like, at the same time, this character's gonna do things. I can retell. Game Game Watch is broken as well. Maybe... No. No, I think... Yeah, no, I think Game Watch is definitely a top-ing character. Maybe better than Wolf. Yeah, I, honest to fucking god, I think he's better than Wolf. Yeah, 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 I like that. Game Watch is a disgusting, broken character. Let's be clear here. Oh, I also think po it's so hard to rank top tier because all these characters are so amazing. I also think Pokemon Trainer is like up here. I definitely think this is like the top five. I think this is the top five. And like, okay, what about this? Okay, top five, top two. No, I got an idea. Okay, just because I'm having problems like ranking these, top five, right? Th this is your top five. These are top tiers. There's not rank. Because it is hard to rank these characters. I definitely feel like Snake is probably t more towards the end though. But like that, I, I don't know. It's hard to rank those characters. But uh, there's another there's another class I want to talk about. And that's the uh, new characters. I haven't ranked yet. And I I'm just going to be completely and utterly honest with you guys here. 
I think Seth Roth stopped there. This character's so good. Holy fuck. This character's good. This character has so much shit. This character just does it all. Oh my god, Seth Roth is really, really good. I, I've wanted to talk about this for a while. I've really never had a place to just talk about Seth Roth. And especially since I've been playing more Seth Roth. And no, it's not because of Nairo. I started playing more Seth Roth before Nairo even said he was coming back, okay? I've been enjoying this character a lot. He's fallen into my character pool. I, I like Seth Roth a lot. But this character is really good. He keeps... His range is insane. I feel like that's just the number one thing we need to get out there. His range is insane. It makes some characters trying to get in on him so fucking hard. If you are slow, you, you're you losing a Seth Roth. Like, this character puts you there, you know? As well as his ledge trapping is crazy good with the neutral B. And side B is an insanely stupid move. It does... A lot of damage, it sets up for kills, it's good for edge guarding, and it tra it can even trap you in shield. And Seth Roth has a way to just shit on that fuck little shield of yours. He just down smashes you the second you try and shield that neutral B. Or side B, my bad. And then, let's not even talk about One Winged Angel. One Winged Angel's busted. Why does he get a third jump? You want to know why a character like Seth Roth doesn't have a third jump? Because you know how much fucking schmicks he gets? Have you been watching Nairo's Seth Roth, even Tweak's Seth Roth? This character gets so much fucking mix-ups because he can randomly gain a third jump that it is absurd. His outer shield options aren't even bad either. He has neutral air, which combos into kills and shit. Uh, yeah, sure, it's a little bit lacking in the range department. But other than that, it is crazy. Oh, I haven't even talked about when Winged Angel gives his uh, smash attack super armor. Meaning, alright, so you want to land on Seth Roth? Oh, he's up smashing? You want to land on him? Not only will you probably get hit by the sword before you even reach him, but if you do reach him, he's going to super armor through you and kill you. Uh, there's no reason for you to use forward smash. It's so slow. It's strong, but it's slow. But yeah, I think Seth Roth is a really good character. This character is going to go places. The only flaw he has is the fact that he's tall and light. And yeah, that probably will hurt him in a lot of matchups. Like, especially against projectile characters. Because that means you're just going to be getting hit by projectiles. But like, oh my god, I haven't even mentioned his broken ass counter. If your recovery is a hitbox, dude, you're fucked against him. Like, he just drops off, down bees you. That shit does, for some reason, so much damage. I don't know what they were thinking when they made that shit, but God, Seth Roth's broken. Really good. And uh, Pyre and Mithra. I've been playing a lot, a lot of Pyre and Mithra. I really, I really like these characters. And I think they're top tier. <clears throat> so, they gave Sheik a sword. And you know why they've never gave Sheik a sword? Because it'd be busted. And look at Mithra. She is busted. If you're optimal with this character, like any stray hit... You're going to get like 50 to 60 damage, or I guess like 40 to 60 damage with any stray aerial or even hit with Mithra. Mithra is insane. Pyra, you know, a lot of people call her low tier. I do not believe that. This character has really good special moves. Her LB out of shield is crazy good. It kills crazy early, has a lot of range. Very, very good move. Her down air is, for some reason, insanely strong and forgiving spike. That's also like close to lagless that also combos in the kills if you're at like red percent like 80 anywhere past like 70 or like 80 you're dead to pyro like anything this is a very good character and then like mithra is my personal favorite out of this duo i don't really use pyro all that much outside of you know kill switch back to mithra because i like mithra a lot because she's so so fast and let's not even talk about foresight Foresight allows you to win. Okay, so let's say, you know, you shoot a you shoot an arrow at, like, you're playing, like, Young Link or something, right? And you shoot an arrow at Mithra, she just foresights that and now smashes you. Like, it is so busted. If you recover too high, I've also seen people labbing, or, like, well, let's say you're, like, Link, and you want to, like, for you want to, like, high recovery, kind of scoop them up and knock them off so you can get off ledge for free. If she foresights that, you're dead. Like, that's genuine. Holy fuck, Foresight is broken. I don't know why they gave her spot dodge randomly which time. I don't know why, but they did. And it's, I'm it busted. I I don't know if you guys know this, but I cannot speak words. So, yeah, I personally believe 
Pisra, as I call her, is busted. <laughs> and also, yeah, you know, MK Leo is going to be playing them, so you already know they're going to be end up being top five by the end of this game's lifespan. Just like my man Joker, love you, Joker. And uh, finally, the last character of the list, Steve. I've seen a lot of mixed opinions on him. I saw East Sam's tier list. I'll 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 spare you the details now. Yeah, no, he he's not a top tier. This character is very good and has a lot of setups. Do not get me wrong. This character has a lot of different things going for him. But he's not a top tier. There's no fucking way. Yeah, sure, he has. He has a lot of things. His minecarts busted. Blocks give him so much schmix and just mix-ups. Like, block is an insanely amazing move. Like, oh, you're landing? Block. Oh, now my mix-up's different. Or, you know, you can drop a the, the, the thingy on it and do the ding. Like, Steve has so much shit. His ledge trapping's also insane because of TNT. Uh, it for definitely forces you into different situations. Minecart, busted, killing, command grab. That's also an amazing burst option. That's also, you know, insanely super armored. Like, insane move. Diamond armor is insane. His recovery is good. If you knock him, like, outwards rather than downwards, he's going to die from it. Or he's going to live if you knock him outwards. Because the glide from that uppy is insane. I'm trying to think what else makes... But then again... Okay, no, no, no. Let's talk about Steve's loss. He's kind of light. He's not, like, super, super light. He's just slightly... Un he's, like, Pikachu weight. He's, like, slightly underweight, I think, if I remember correctly. Uh, his burst range isn't... Or, sorry, his range isn't all too phenomenal. But even then, it doesn't really matter because he doesn't want to interact with you. Steve is a character that does not want to interact with you. He wants to sit on one side of the stage, build a wall, and then start mining. That that's Steve's whole game plan, because diamonds is his win condition. I think I hit almost everything I wanted to talk about in this video. There's probably more I could go over with like every character. There's probably some other characters like Mist. Like, well, this character should go from low to high tier. No, I I don't I don't care. Uh, remember, only thing ordered on this list is top five, so don't take anything out of context. I'll start uploading actual content someday whenever I feel like it. I've uh, been kind of lazy. But yeah, uh, that's the tier list. Uh, I'll make another one in the uh, next eight months. Bye-bye.